name is uh, Larry West Taper, and I've been uh, with the project since the inception in 1987. And the first well, the old well, was put in in 87. The new well, they added a new well in the year 2000. And over the years, we did a lot of experimenting and it seemed to take years until we finally got it done where we got the proper holes in the pipes where the water uh, comes out and also the intake. You have to make it pretty indestructible because of the high waters. But then in the year when uh, Ivan, Hurricane Ivan hit, right where I am standing, although I am like maybe 15 feet above the water, there was water here. And it uh, pretty well destroyed our project at the upper end, not the please, but to pour all our pipes and intakes out. And then uh, we rebuilt that the following year. And now everything seems to be working fine. And uh, we've had help all these years. It's been a week, and we come in here weekly. And maybe sometimes I even come in during the week. Uh, if, uh, like especially in the fall when there's leaves, it keeps uh, screens on clock. But uh, on, a, on a weekly basis, we put maybe, I'd say between maybe one and a half and two, two and a half ton, maybe even more. But just sort of an estimate, I don't really know exactly, but say, Three ton a week on the average. And maybe you might have 40 weeks out of a year that it works during the summer. You don't have enough water, so we, uh, there's quite a bit of limestone in. And the way the wells work, a lot of people think the stone dissolves, but it, it doesn't really dissolve. Uh, so the action of the water, there's a 10 foot drop, which creates pressure in a pipe, and uh, there's holes there that restrict it so the water comes out at a rapid pace. And uh, that takes the stone, and they call it a fluidized phase, which basically means the stone will float the water from the pressure. And the stone doing that, they're like in a three, there's three holes in each one, which a total of six with two wells. And then balls of stone just go round and round, hitting each other and grinding into a potter, which goes into the stream, which turns the stream a little discolored. But if you right in this area where the stream's doing the you go down, it got completely dissolved. If you go several hundred yards down the stream, you don't even see any signs of it. But as, uh, I've been coming back here for well over 50 years, and uh, when I first come here, there was no wild trout in this stream. And these projects have a uh, restored stream, at least to the point where some wild trout can live in the stream. And it's been working well. Yeah, and uh, the older diversion well, which was put in in 87, was done uh, through a cooperative effort with Penn State. And the idea came from, I think it was Sweden, and it was the first diversion well put in the United States. It's kind of like an experimental start. And that's how most, uh, I know we went to other places to show people how to uh, install these diversion wells, and the knowledge we came from our experimentation here. I'm Steve Long, a board member of the Doc Frenchy chapter of Trout Unlimited and a diversion well worker. What I'm going to do here is try to open Check and make sure the holes in the nozzle are open and not clogged by leaves. If you listen real carefully, you can actually hear the rock tinking against this uh, iron steel rod we've got. Which means the holes are pretty well open already. Okay, hi, I'm Jerry uh, Moore. Right now we're filling the wheelbarrow. Yeah. We're trying to concentrate. I find stuff that we had to deliver this summer because in the winter time, freezing dropped hard. They're filling the wheelbarrow as much as possible with a fine, finer graded limestone. At least eight here. I'm Dennis Kaufman and I'm part of uh, Trout Unlimited, uh, on the Trout Unlimited board at the Doc Ritchie chapter. And we're up here in the uh, headwaters of the Stony Creek at uh, the diversion well. And what we have before us here is uh, where the intake is, with the dam on the stream that we made. And that water backs up, goes into uh, the pipes that run about 100 yards down to the diversion well. Uh, here, uh, pipes and uh, clean over time. 
half of the pipes cause of debris and, and leaves getting on there to get back. Come into these boxes, shoot down these pipes. Uh, might be able to get a shot a little bit. They're buried in along the stream the whole way down. Maybe about 100 yards, 75 yards to the diversion well. Uh, what that does is it puts a lot of pressure uh, on the water that it's going down. And uh, when it comes into the wells, it turns the, comes through some jets in the wells and it turns the limestone that we shovel in each week. And uh, that grinds it up and pushes the powder out into the stream, which helps the pH. Up here, we have very little life uh, in the stream because of the uh, high uh, acidic rate. And down below, we have, uh, below the diversion well, we have uh, native trout and trout swimming there at the bridge. That's uh, kind of what happens up here. Uh, it's a wonderful morning out here in Rouch Creek in Stony Valley, and uh, we're glad that Dave could join us out here to see, see our uh, crew at work. Uh, you probably already have talked to some of the others who work out here every week, so uh, I won't really get into uh, too much of that. But our Doc Fritchie chapter of TU uh, has obviously been uh, hard at work trying to do some great restoration and conservation efforts. Uh, this, this is our keynote project, which we've been working on for 20 years, but uh, we also do work on some other areas in Dauphin and Lebanon counties. We have uh, restored about uh, half a mile of Spring Creek, which is a wild brown trout stream right in the urban part of Harrisburg. We've got more work to do next year there with another phase of a grant. Uh, we do work on the Quidipahela in Creek in Lebanon County. We've done quite a number of projects on that and expect to do a lot more. And uh, we've got some work planned for Manada Creek uh, here also next summer. So there's plenty of work to keep us involved. And we're also always interested in any volunteers that would like to come out and join us. You don't have to be a TU member, but you might want to join after you see the fun we have. And uh, so that's, uh, that's, in a nutshell, what Dr. Fritchie TU is all about.